Karashe, a small lake in central Russia, located next to the Soviet Plutonium Production Center, was considered the most contaminated site in the world between 1950 and 1960. In 1990, it was the only radioactive site on Earth that contained more radioactive material at its bottom than was produced by the Chernobyl disaster. What actually happened and how it all started? The lake was contaminated due to a long series of bad decisions, which also culminated in a huge explosion. But let's go back to the beginning. The history of the area began around 1941, when industrial production moved here from the war-threatened European part of the Soviet Union. In 1945, the order was made to build a nuclear power plant with the first reactor to create plutonium for the Soviet production of atomic bombs. Right after, 70,000 prisoners began construction of an underground complex of facilities, which was later named the Mayak, translated as the Lighthouse in English. It included a city for 100,000 people, originally referred to as Chelyabinsk 40. Facility for the development and production of atomic weapons was later given the official name, Ozjorsk, originally Chelyabinsk 65. You can get an idea of the working conditions that prevailed there from the fact that the courts gave a choice of 25 years of forced labor in Siberia or five years in Mayak. The Soviets wanted to catch up with the Americans, who were the first to successfully detonate an atomic bomb in New Mexico by building a top secret facility. They built the whole complex in three years, and in a hurry to develop the perfect atomic bomb, they did not address the safety measures of both workers and the environment. At the end of the Cold War, 10 nuclear reactors were operational, producing several tons of contaminated material. In addition, the reactors used an open cycle cooling system, which means that they took cooling water from the lake, which flowed through the entire system and returned irradiated to the lake. In our case, the facility took the cooling water directly from the River Teka and returned the water enriched with a good portion of radioactivity. At the time, the river served as a source of drinking water. This already sounds terrible, so could it be even worse? However, the waste from the reaction was dangerous. A radioactive solution of the compounds, including sodium nitrate and sodium acetate salts. This was cooled in huge storage tanks, and then the remaining mixture was dissolved in a combination of water and a chemical called tributyl phosphate. This mixture allowed workers to selectively extract high levels of uranium and plutonium that could be reused. However, they left behind another mixture of radioactive strontium, cesium and technetium. Strontium and cesium emit high levels of so-called beta rays, ionizing radiation and also a lot of heat. So in order to cool the waste, they decided to store it in nearby Lake Karashe, which was a pretty stupid idea. So what happened with the radioactive material in the open lake? The decision to deposit waste in a non-draining lake resulted in a high concentration of pollution in one place. Just to illustrate it, before 1951, the workers received an average dose of 95 REM. Limit is 2 REM. After that year, it rose to 113 REM, and in some extreme cases, over 400 REM. REM is the abbreviation for the Rohingyan Equivalent Man. It is a unit to estimate potential health effects of radiation on the human body. The lake was used for this purpose until the catastrophe in 1957 when the underground reservoir exploded due to a faulty cooling system and contaminated the entire area. It is measured as a level six disaster on the International Nuclear Events Scale, INES, making it the third most serious nuclear accident ever recorded, just after the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster and the Chernobyl disaster, both INES level seven. At least 22 villages were exposed to radiation and about 10,000 people were evacuated. Some were evacuated after a week but it took almost two years to clean up elsewhere. The disaster spread hot radioactive particles to more than 52,000 square kilometers, where at least 270,000 people lived. The first symptoms that the unfortunate inhabitants could notice were the outbreak of radiation sickness and the death of plants about 20 kilometers wide circle from the epicenter. If you think that all the bad things already happened, well, not really. Over the next decade, another catastrophe added to this horrible event. In the 1960s, waste material seeped into groundwater, which was used for irrigation and drinking. In addition, in 1967, due to the excessive heat produced by nuclear waste, the lake began to dry up. The radioactive dust from the dry lake then spread across the south of the Soviet Union. It affected almost half a million people, 
Over time, it is only estimated that these people could receive a similar dose as the victims of the Hiroshima explosion. What had to happen to stabilize the situation? The Soviet Union had to admit that it had made a mistake. In the 1970s and 1980s, concrete blocks were placed across the lake to prevent further wind erosion. Thanks to co-financing from the USA and Europe, it was so filled with cement to prevent groundwater from being contaminated. In 2015, it was resupplied with a special type of concrete that is resistant to radioactive radiation. And finally, in 2016, a layer of rock and topsoil was laid. Despite these measures, staying by the lake is not recommended. It is still an active nuclear storage facility and the seventh most radioactive location on our planet. Should there ever be a flood or other disturbance that would cause the mud to circulate and eventually into the Arctic Ocean, humanity could write off rich fisheries. And if water with mud spills from the banks and then dries out, the problem with radioactive dust will recur. The place is simply very risky to this day, but not much is known about it. The Soviet Union managed to keep it a fairly good secret, and of course Russia is not interested in reminding it either. <laughs>